You've never seen a site that was not included in and as this awareness you are. Now, you've never seen anybody else's sight. One awareness, the only awareness, the only one you've ever been, has been alone, has seen every sight that you've ever seen. Now, whether that sight happens to be an external, so-called external, away from a point in time and space called out there, like Mount Everest, it might be uh, that you can see it literally, or whether it's a, an internal image, a vision, a thought, like at the minute all of you can think what home looks like, or what, what parents look like, or what friend or lover looks like, you can vision, but all of these visions and all of these sights, whether tangible or intangible, are within one location, one place, within awareness, within identity. So you've never seen a sight with your own sight. Now, what about the sound? Right now you're listening to a sound, aren't you? You might say you're listening to a sound that is Bill talking to you, Bill Sanders. But are you listening to a sound that is Bill Samuels, or are you listening to a sound that is within awareness, the awareness you are? But you're listening to a sound that's within awareness, the identity you are. If you identify as awareness, you know darn well you're not separate from that which you include, or which you hear, feel, see. So the sound you're hearing right now is the sound you're being, you're not separate nor apart from it if you identify as awareness. But if you identify as a point in time and space, yeah, sure, it's out there and belongs to somebody else. And then you have to worry about it and, and, and argue with it and judge it and call it good or evil, right or wrong, correct or incorrect, inspired or uninspired, or uplifting or, or not uplifting, or inspirational or not inspirational. But, but listen. If you identify as the awareness you are, and you understand you're listening to yourself, any criticism or condemnation would be self-criticism and self-condemnation. Any judgment would be self-judgment. Somewhere, somewhere, the statement was made, and I know you all know, by what measure you judge You'll be judged. You've heard that. Remember, the original apple on the tree was called judgment. It's the judgment of good and evil. All right, so as awareness now, we understand that every sight we've ever seen has been our own sight. And every sound that we've ever heard has been our own sound. And as awareness, every feeling that we've ever felt has been our own feeling. So see how infinite is this awareness. All of a sudden it's alone, total, only, and all. Awareness, the functioning of mind. Mind and its functioning are all one mind. Mind without functioning wouldn't be mind at all, would it? Mind functioning is mind in its totality and completeness. Now, one of the, one of the few agreements in all this world, in this world, bear in mind, is perceived and understood, felt and experienced in one place only, Within the awareness, you are. Within and as the identity, you are. In all of this world, one of the strange agreements with all of the religions, that is, when their original statement, their basic statement, before it got all twisted around by the great possessors of awareness, the great judges of awareness, and the custodians of awareness, and the manipulators of it, was that God and mind are synonymous. 
eternity. It has been said in many ways by many philosophers that mind is God, or that God is mind, or that God is life, or that life is God. Okay. Y'all with me up to up to this point? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's not difficult to understand. It's so simple. It has been its simplicity. It has hidden it, not its profundity and complexity. Its simplicity is what I do. It is in utter simplicity that we discover. And coming out of the awful intellectual struggle of striving and contending and weighing and measuring, to come back home to simplicity. There's a story told in the East that Buddha one time was, was made the remark, he says, I have here the, 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 the quest of life, is the way he put it. Jesus said the pearl of great time. He said, I have here the quest of life, what all mankind is looking for, but lest it be trampled under foot by these custodians of life, where shall we hide it so that it can't be found? Jesus said, called it a pearl that is not to be trampled by swine or something like that. The Buddha says, where shall we hide it? Well, one of his disciples said, let's take it out and hide it in the deepest part of the ocean. The Buddha said, no, if man will find it there. Man whose breath is in his nostril, this possessor of awareness that calls everything good or evil, You'll find it there. And uh, someone else suggested that they be taken and hidden in the midst of the Pleiades. Pleiades, that's a constellation of a bunch of beautiful stars. It's got to be one of the most beautiful sights that we can see. And it's quite a long ways away. Distance goes from a point in time and space, it's a long ways away. But it isn't a long ways away from awareness. It's an image within awareness, isn't it? Within the identity you are. Within an infinite identity. <coughs> You've never heard of Pleiades, but even the word has only been heard within the awareness you are. Within the infinite identity you are. The pure and perfect identity you already are right here, right now. Okay, so this one disciple said, well, Master, tell us if we don't hide it in the ocean and if we don't put it out in the farthest reaches of space, where can we hide it where, no, hide it where nobody will find it? And many of you know, you've read it already. I think it's required reading in Philosophy 101 or something like that. He said, we will clothe it in simplicity and hide it in the heart. Clothe it in simplicity and hide it in the heart. Because, of course, the intellectual nature of it, the intellect of it, the old man of it, not that the intellect is the old man of it, but it's certainly the meat of the old man of it, it's the support and the prop of the old man of it, the intellect of it. The intellect it doesn't think to look into the heart and into the heart. The heart doesn't make enough sense for it. The heart is too uncertain. The heart is not scientific enough. The heart isn't certain enough. The heart is too wishy-washy. Well, I would tell you that I found it in simplicity. I found it when I gave up the intellectual struggle. Not that I didn't give the intellect fair play. Not that I didn't butt my head against every wall that I could butt it against. Not that I didn't ponder every cone and and repeat every mantra and study every lesson and attend every sermon and follow every teacher that I could find. One day I stood up at a pond and lo and behold I found that 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 I had been looking for. That that I had been lo looking for. 
It's right here, right now. The very life I am. The God that I wanted to see face to face. It's the very life, is the very life. Identity is. Closer than breathing. Closer than fingers and toes. Well, I resolved that I would live what I saw. I had long before learned that if when something would break through and a new little bit of inspiration in life, and that incident is happening right now, you know it? There are a lot of people here hearing things that they have intuitively known forever. Why? Because it is who and what you are. Of course you intuitively know who and what you are. The heart knows who and what the heart is. Life knows itself. And so right now, there are those saying, God, this is so, this is true. Well, I resolved that I would live it to the best of my ability. And I began to do it. And in the process of doing it, I began to butt head with propriety. And I butted heads with society. And I butted heads with all of the institutions, one by one. And every, everything lowered, lowered the boom to send me rushing back to the old concept with which I had been comfortable, reasonably comfortable, at least compared to the awful agony that, uh, that was presenting itself, it did seem that the old way was more comfortable. And so, and so I was sorely tempted to go rushing back to the old way and realize how many times in the past I had, how many times in the past I had seen the truth and recognized it, only to be frightened back, only to go running back. And I tell all of you here tonight, those of you that have understood, and there are those that are seeing and understanding how true this is, because it's so simple, it will not be long until the intellect of you will question what the heart right now accepts and believes and knows. And the intellect will present every, every reason to discredit what the heart knows. Now let me tell you why this is so. I didn't know why. I didn't know why at the time, but now I know why. And a great deal of anguish and agony and suffering can be averted if you'll understand why and much going back to old religious exercises and, and can be averted if you'll just understand why. If, if all of you will, let me, let me tell you what, let me, just come with me in a mental journey. Let's pretend that right now everybody is sleeping and dreaming. Now you see, Years ago, people didn't used to worry about identity. Why? Because they looked in the mirror and said, this is my identity. But now there's a great quest for identity. Why? Because once you looked in the mirror and said, uh-uh, there's another identity. Finally, we've got another dualism on the scene, two identities. A man said, when you make the two into a single one, then you will see the kingdom of heaven. Let's make it into a single one. Why do there appear to be two identities on the scene? Well, come with me now, and let's pretend that all of us are dreams. And it's a night dream. And in this night dream, uh, we're walking through the woods. Maybe you're walking with me in the woods. But that's all I ever do, it's about. And uh, I enjoy what I see, I be. What I see, I be. What identity sees it is, is nature. Disclosing itself and revealing itself like the alphabet discloses the nature of by its numerals and its words. Well, okay, we're walking through the woods in this dream. Now, you have an identity in this dream, don't you? You call it your dream identity. And in this dream, you look out and you see one called Bill and you see one called Wife, maybe. 
or a husband, and you see one called children in the stream, and you see a path, and you see trees as we walk through the woods. And I tell you as we walk along that this is a game trail where, where the Alabama deer walk. There are people in this room right now that have walked with me along some of those pathways. That have walked through with me in Alabama meadows. All right, now as we walk along this, we come out, we come to a meadow, and there's, as you can see, the pathway going through the grass, and there's a tree at the far end of the meadow, and, and we're walking toward it, but suddenly you hear a noise. You hear your children running through the leaves, and you hear the, you hear the, the voices, and the, and the wind blowing, and rustling the leaves, and, and in this dream, you have an identity, and you see in this dream another identity that appears to be able to act on its own and do and think for itself, and maybe do dumb things or nutty things. And you see a tree that is separate and apart from your dream identity in the dream. All right, suddenly you hear a huffing and a puffing behind you, and you look back, and here comes the face. Now, we don't have, we have little dinky bears in Alabama. You people out here got big ones that go with your big mountains. But let's say this is a big bear. Somehow one of your California bears got in Alabama. Like right now, one of your Alabama bears, I guess, is here in California. But where is Alabama and where is California? And where is the universe? Where is every sight you've ever seen within? This is where you are right now. So, so here's this bear. And immediately there's a panic. And you tell the children to run, run, run to the tree up there. And so you run and I run. And we run to the tree. And the first thing we do is we, and the bear's directly behind us. And there's bears gaining on us. And you can hear it huffing and puffing. And you can look back and you see bloodshot eyes and dripping fangs and great shiny claws, and so we run to this tree, and you, we lift the children up. It's just a dream being a dream, but we don't know it, do we? We're in this dream, and it's a panic. It's pretty much of a nightmare. And we lift the children up, and, and boy, I'm, I tell you, I'm ahead of everybody. I'd get up there. I'd climb up, make darn jump up there, and you start struggling up, but your wife, your wife doesn't quite make it. You women live, people, can lower the boom on it, if you like. The woman, the woman didn't quite make it, and so the bear grabs her, and you see this tremendous, you see all kinds of things going on in this dream, and it's pretty horrible. You hear, you see blood, and you hear screams, and it's awful, isn't it, in this dream? All right, what happens when a dream gets real miserable? What happens when it gets so miserable you can't stand it? What happens when you hurl yourself off a cliff just before you hit the bottom? What happens to the dream? You are waking, don't you? Well, let's pretend now in this dream, though, that you don't quite awake. <laughs> you just turn over in the bed and you say to yourself, Oh, holy mackerel. It was just a dream. It was just a dream. And then you snuggle back up because it isn't time to get up and you go back to dreaming and this time you dream something more pleasant. Well now listen, listen, in this dream all of you can clearly see that the people in the dream and the other identities in the dream and the multiplicity of people in the dream and the 10,000 things as it's put in Oriental philosophy are not separate nor apart from the dream. That it's all just one dream going on. And that the substance of everything that you see is, is dream. Right? And that it's included in one place alone, in a dream. Now, because you've stirred just a little bit, suddenly you're aware of two items. And if you snuggle back and get more comfortable in the dream, you're this time aware that there's another identity greater. One that isn't so beset with trials and tribulations, that isn't so agonized by the sights and sounds all around us. The things are not as they appear. Can you see now that, that in the dream there was just one substance? It was called dream. 
Can you see that right here, right now, this instant, that there is one substance present, one basic, underlying, overlying substance is present, called awareness, called feeling, called reality, called by many men. And yet no name can name it. And any name that is supposed to be the name for it can't name it. How can something that's infinite be given a finite name? A name would be limited. Yet this awareness is infinite. It has no name. It is known only to itself. Now let me ask you, how many of you have heard the statement that him that overcomes will be given a smooth white stone on which is a name that only he shall know is in vain for Those are words that are in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, a statement by John. How many of you have heard the statement, he who knows doesn't speak, and he, he who speaks doesn't know? How can what is infinite by any way, shape, form, or fashion be circumscribed or, or spoken of because the very words that would attempt to speak of it would be a lie because they would be limiting and infinite. So the statement is that we can only point a finger at the moon, but it, but it has to be seen by a wind. So... So it is that I stood up from a pond one day and heard a symphony. And it would seem that the thing, the reason it's so difficult is I talk to those who come to me. And believe you me, I don't come out like this very often. And don't want to. But those who come and ask, what is this? And it seems sensible then to use words. The use of words is sort of like trying to put the Star Spangled Banner into words. So that, so that it can be heard from the Word, and so that all of the instruments can be heard from the Word, and all of the notes can be heard from the Word, and all of the fine tingling or whatever you see, and you hear any melody that you love, some symphony, well, it can't be put in the Word, really. But listen, the awareness you are knows itself. Life knows itself. Because the only knowing going on, you're concerned about is the knowing you are. During the time that you're just awakening from a dream, you find yourself able to do all kinds of strange things. You know, just as you're waking up, the dream begins to lose its solidity. And if you awaken as you're waking up, and there is sort of a transitional state between wakefulness and sleeping, you find funny things going on in the dream. You find that you can leap over walls, you can fly like a bird, and you can walk naked up and down the street, and nobody will fuss at you. Or something else. You find that you can do all kinds of amazing things. This period in our... And this awareness, right here, right now, this period, this time, when there seems to be an awareness of an ego or an identity that we have believed ourselves to be, a great possessor of this awareness, and when we're becoming conscious that awareness itself is who we are, is a period of distortion, when all kinds of strange and weird things are going on. Where? within the awareness we are. And so we see mountains move, we see the earth tremble, we see man destroying himself all in the dream, and yet we find ourselves with peculiar ability, maybe uh, an ability that if we were to just, just be honest here and literal, the gifts of healing, the gifts of mental manipulation, the gifts of mind control, the gift of being able to levitate, 
the gift of being able to think leaves across the, uh, the pond, the surface of the water. The gift of soul travel or projection. All of these things appear to be, yeah, sure, they appear in the distort. But listen, listen. I walked down that path for myself. I found myself what the world calls a healer. Oh boy, there was nothing, nothing. It didn't seem to yield or lend itself to, to my ability, to, to the possessor of awareness's ability, to the dreamer's ability. I could do anything and everything. Nobody ever came to me with a problem that I couldn't resolve in one way or another. That is, it, did, it came to them with a problem, to the dreamer, to the one that said, this is my awareness. Boy, I was just something. Now listen, listen, all of you, if you're dreaming, and it's a pleasant dream, and you love it, and everything that's going on in there, there's some very cherished things going on in there, maybe a very happy love affair, or maybe, what, well, maybe you're wealthy and money is rolling in or something like that is going on in your dream. And you begin to wake up. If you find uh, during this period of distort that, gosh, you can just make money come rolling in and you can heal and you can do all sorts of things, you can levitate, tell me in the, in, the, in the arena of this illustration, what does this do to the dream? It may seem happy with the dream. It may seem comfortable with the dream. And so we snuggle up and are stuck to the dream all along. And so it is, I walked down a big ego path and was very happy with all that was going along in my affairs and I could heal and help everybody and everything except this one person, this one, myself. Position heal thyself. Now you, you young folks here, who are myself. There's no separation between the one you're listening to right now and the one you are. You are what you see. You are not young people. Experience time with you has accelerated tremendously. You have lived your, your beliefs and ideas and have had the guts and courage to do it. Running upstream, running against the current, like a carpenter did one time who dared say there was more than law, there was also love. And like a, an astronomer who did one time who dared say, that contrary to the total structure, contrary to Every belief, he dared say, the earth is not flat, the front. You folks, you young people, wisdom, of course, comes with what's called years. Yeah, sure, the, the time. It, it comes mostly from experience, and this is what all of you have done. Your experience time is way ahead of most of the venerable gray hairs you see all over the place. And you know it. And you know you know it. And I know it, too. Now, the child you are is awareness. And it's all that's ever been real. And all of the venerable gray hairs and the teachers and the professors and the ministers and all of the people filled with pomp and majesty and proclaiming a grand identity to be their own and so forth, their children too. Why? Because they are images within yourself. They are forms that you see within the awareness you are. They are like the letters of the alphabet, revealing yourself to yourself. And so you've never seen anyone but yourself. And the young folk know this is so and have the courage to live it. If this, this statement is not new, this statement has been being made for a long time by many people. 
every once in a while, every once in a while, in all of our experience, someone comes along to say, look, if you consider yourself a climber climbing up the ladder to get to wisdom, even if you were to get to wisdom, you'd still have the climb. Every once in a while, somebody comes along and says, look, if you consider yourself a dumb dumb trying to get smart, even if you get smart, you're still stuck with the one who was struggling to get there. Every once in a while, somebody comes along and says, look, if you consider yourself walking along a path to enlightenment and illumination, you are identifying as one who is not light and illumination here and now. Every once in a while, somebody looks up at an identity, at some vision of themselves, that says, what you're looking for is what you are. And the only way to get there is to be there. And quit being the struggling one. Quit being the climber. Now listen, that leaves something unfair. It doesn't change the scene. Right now we can walk out of here and say, yeah, I'm it. It is on. There's only one awareness on the scene. God awareness. The divine awareness. The divine life. There's just that one life. Allness and onlyness is who and what I am right here, right now. But what is there left to do? There is to live it. To live it. Now, how? How? Very simple. Again, it's just simplicity. It's good height. But your heart will hear this and your intellect will argue with it and they'll help you. But your heart will hear it. And your heart will know it's gone. We acknowledge the single identity, this awareness, to be the only identity. That God really is all. And that God is this life right here, right now. We acknowledge that fact. But then what do we do? Then we start just letting go the belief that this awareness is not already there. We can proclaim our mission to be this identity and then just start letting go the belief that ignorance is what we are. To just look on the scene of one living and living such a concept still appears to be a man reading a book, studying a philosophy, practicing a discipline, going to lectures. But this one is listening for self confirmation, not reading for information, trying to get. This one is looking for an external confirmation of an identity that he intuitively, instinctively knows he is. The appearances are the same. But the one who lives in this manner gets there now. The only thing I've said tonight, folks, is that there's an old, old philosophy on the scene that is now being articulated anew in ways that it can be understood, and it's no longer being hidden. It's no longer being... Cloister. It is no longer being spoken of with symbols. It's being said in plain, simple terms for those that have ears to hear. That perfection is here and now all that is here and now. As opposed to the old idea that perfection is, is something that we struggle and strive and strain to get to. And the, and the old new message that is being presented at the moment is that all there is to do is to live it, to live our profession. And that is to let go of the belief that perfection is not present right here, right now, the fact. Now, this is a lot easier 
said, I guess, and done. But nonetheless, it's possible. It can be done. And all of you will do it. If not now, sooner or later, but you'll do it. Self-awareness is inevitable. The experience called illumination has already happened for all of you many times, just like it has happened for many in the room tonight. Just an awakening, just to sense God. God, there is an identity infinitely greater. And that is the identity I am. And it's single and it's alone, and the authority lies with me, myself and I, since I'm always looking at my own sights and my own sound. Every companion I've ever needed is included within the identity I am, and every dollar I've ever, ever needed or thought about is included within and as this identity I am. And every dream that I've ever thought about and its solution exists right here within this awareness I am. That identity is that you are. And it's so. And then you will remember the statement that has been made. Then God gave man dominion. Dominion. Over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Dominion is yours. And you will maybe remember another statement made by this by this prophet, the Galilean prophet. It has been your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. Literally. Figures. Third. Total. Where is it? Where is that thing? It's right here now, as the life you are. We went through. And what do you have to do? Only to let go of the belief that you are a possessor of ignorance and a possessor of weights and, and a possessor of trials and tribulations trying to get to that identity that you are in. Folks, uh, I perhaps have not done any better than anybody else has ever done in saying these things. Uh, I know what I want to say. Uh, yet I know it can't be said either. Yet I know that what I see is wisdom and beauty and perfection. And it understands itself. And uh, I don't ask you to believe anything that I say. I don't care. Look on me as a false prophet. It's just another mirror. Just another voice crying in the wilderness. But, but, but I would tell you that everything that I've said here tonight, you can try it out. To yourself. It is provable. You can live as the identity you are. Why? Because you are the identity. And while the words are feeble and fluttering and very, very much faulty. It wasn't in the words anyway, was it? It was in the, it was in the, and is in the, the light, the love, the peace, the beauty, and the dominion that is here, here now, or tomorrow we'll take these things up in detail. It will be a discussion tomorrow, back and forth, and we will. We will iron out. We will talk about. We will make it plain upon the tables in simple terms, with simple illustrations. And we'll leave you with a, a system or a philosophy, a, a spiritual exercise that you can follow, that you can do, but it won't be a, an exercise intended to get you up to light and illumination. It will be a spiritual exercise that you do as light and as illumination that allows you to let go 
all of the gross and all of the old man and all of the ignorance and all of the belief and all of the idea of a flat earth. It doesn't have any power anyway. It will allow you to do it. <laughs> Prove me now herewith. Trust the Lord of hosts. He's put in the Bible. Prove me now herewith. And I will show you that all of the warehouses cannot contain the trace that will be given. If you are. <laughs> 